right, so here we are for episode two of Netflix's Three Body Problem. Um, a few residual thoughts I had from uh, yesterday's episode. Um, I was talking to a few people about it uh, after having seen it. And one of the criticisms I was hearing was the portrayal of what scientists are like, which I actually cited as kind of a, a bit of a strength. Someone called it uh, Alien Invasion 90210 because all the people in it are young and attractive. And I said, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, all physicists are young and attractive and snap off witty one-liners. That's just realism. But no, that's that's a TV convention. I don't that, that doesn't bother me too much. Um, you know, I mean, in the they don't look up. They had Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence cast in the movie. So let's not get too carried away with that. The other thing was uh, someone said, you know, I find it very unrealistic that a particle physicist would smoke pot. And I said, well, you clearly don't know enough particle physicists then. They're an interesting lot. I did take a particle physics class when I was in graduate school, and it was in intensely interesting, uh, especially to hear about some of the inside stuff. And so uh, this doesn't cross me as too unrealistic, actually, a portrayal. I mean, obviously, you, you have some artistic license because you're making a TV show. But one thing that did, after thinking about it, strike me as a little bit unrealistic was when they're showing the uh, particle accelerator and later the um, neutrino detector that it's just a couple of people around, those would usually be filled with lots and lots of staffers, uh, usually at least a half dozen to a dozen people. So you wouldn't have these, even if you're being shut down, it takes lots of people to run those things. So you wouldn't have these empty hallways that are darkly lit for uh, dramatic purposes, but that's a minor complaint. So uh, let's just get started with um, episode two. It never happened. How can that be? The world saw it happen. Sure, everyone on Earth. But you know who didn't see it? Webb, Hubble, chaos. None of the satellites saw it, you know why? Why? Because it never happened. That is interesting that space telescopes didn't see it, which suggests it's a psychological thing. Seeing these connections between the past and the present, there is sort of, it's sort of building in my mind this idea that when we've transmitted signals out into space, it's been controversial. A lot of people thought that was a bad idea because the potential benefit of contacting friendly alien civilizations was outweighed by the potential danger of encountering hostile civilizations. 1968, they're transmitting. 2024, something is happening. So maybe that's the time delay. So that's my guess right now as to what's going on here. From the Alright, a lot of one of the things I want to comment on here. This is one of the reasons why classifying and restricting scientific information is so destructive. Because she put this together because she communicated illegally with someone from America and was able to put two pieces of information together to get a third piece of information. Um this is, I mean, science works by this kind of communication, by taking two facts and putting them together and deriving a third fact. And so when you put these kind of restrictions on the passage of information, as China was at that time, as we have in certain circumstances, you create noise. You make it impossible for science to progress or at least slow it down. Um, there was a debate during the Cold War about our technological edge over the Soviets and whether allowing scientists to publish their results and not have to have everything bound by secrets was actually be better because it would establish a rate of scientific progress in the United States that the Soviet Union could never keep up with. Ultimately, things remain classified because that is the military's inclination. But it is, I really like this scene where, um, where she has to go outside the usual channels to get a critical piece of information here and wouldn't be able to figure this out without it. 
I'm not sure why the sun is amplifying radio signals. It doesn't do that, but I'm guessing we'll hopefully get an explanation of that at some point. Again, that thing that happens when you grind science through a single lens. She is right, by the way, even the most powerful radio signals from Earth uh, would be very weak and, and difficult to detect unless aliens were really had sensitive detectors and were really looking for them. Um, even the most powerful transmitter, remember the, di the strength falls off as the distance squared. These are designed to go over Earth distances, so once you get them over trillions and trillions of miles, the signal gets very, very, very weak. Most radio telescopes we build are designed to detect things like emissions from black holes and things that are orders and orders of magnitude more powerful than what we could generate here on Earth. You were not invited. <laughs> Some bird just cut my head off. This, this, this is not normal. I could smell the f I could feel the coal. I could taste the f dirt. You ate dirt? Do you understand how far beyond the current state of the art this is? I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about 50 years, 150? Yeah, feels about right. Another question that came up when I was discussing this offline was, uh, you know, do scientists really cuss that much? Because there's a lot of profanity in this. You have to use so many cuss words. It really depends on who you're hanging out with. I've been in groups where there was no profanity. I've been in groups that swore like sailors. It really depends on, on who you're with. And I suspect if you're British here, that uh, profanity is a little more common. What's our mission? Our mission, Jin Chung, is Jack Rooney getting his mortal revenge. She got cut my off again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you dead? Shot in the head. Oh, sorry. Don't be. No, it's a good way to go. So quick. I'm very I'm suspicious of this girl. Keep warm, mate. Hey, well. He shouldn't, but he can't resist. This is what you always do, man. You, you, you give up on everything. I didn't give up on You quit anything. physics because you thought you weren't smart enough. You give up on gin because you thought you were punching above. You're not giving up on your own life. I don't feel like eating, Jack. Well, just try. Well, that was a nice scene. I'm suspecting this video game is kind of like an Ender's Game type deal. To contact it, aliens or whatever that is out there, but 
I guess we'll have to see. Let the days fly past. Put your hand on the ground. It speeds up time. I'm assuming this is some kind of communication from the aliens. The sun is following a very odd track in the sky um, that suggests multiple influences of gravity. So maybe that's the three body problem that you have multiple stars. That would also potentially, depending on where you were orbit wise and how the configuration was, create periods of stability and instability in, uh, in the climate of any planet around there. So. Maybe I'm beginning to see how these pieces fit is it together. Possible? It is, Emperor. I was reading up on radio telescopes after the stars blinked. Back in 1977, Ohio State University detected a 72 second sequence. They called it the wow signal because it made all the astrophysicists go wow. They said it looked like an attempt at communication. Turn from who? Little green men. What's it say? Um, the wow signal isn't a big secret. You can find it on Wikipedia. Um, it there are some people who speculate on what it is. I my I think I talked about it in my um, contact video that uh, I think this is probably something secular, like a transient or fast radio burst or something like that that we didn't understand at the time. No, no one's been able to decode it, and nobody outside of Ohio State detected it. Except for one observatory in northeast China. Took a while to get for that episode to get going. I still like it. Um, that seemed to sort of be setting up a lot of pieces that uh, hopefully will pay off. It seems a little bit of a stretch to think that the aliens would respond to her in intelligible Chinese and they would understand the message she sent them. I mean, aliens might not even have the same concepts of language that we do, which is one of the things I've emphasized in my past videos about how that communication barrier may be very difficult, if not impossible, to overcome because their whole concept of language may be different. And so uh, I'm very, either this is you know, artistic license by the by the writers, just saying, okay, let's have them speak Chinese, whatever. Or there's something more nefarious going on where it's pretending to be a signal from aliens. So I did a little bit of research into whether this solar amplification thing has any basis in real science. And I can't really find anything. There are occasional references to using the sun to enhance radio signals, but they have to uh, beam into it in a very specific way and very specific frequencies and so forth. Um, I've never in history of radio astronomy heard of the sun amplifying radio signals like this. 
and for them to, to come in. Um, if that were the case, we receive radio signals from the universe every day and the sun would be booming in the radio. And uh, it just it isn't like that. So uh, that, that crosses me as uh, a bit of scientific license. So um, I, I am curious where they're going with this. There seems to be a lot of loose threads right now that are hopefully going to be tied together in the next few episodes. Um, there, there seems to be setting up a lot of things that are going on here. But I think we're starting to piece together a little bit of this, uh, of, of what's going on here. So the two main scientific issues I saw with this one were using the sun to amplify a radio signal, which I don't think is realistic, and being able to communicate in coherent Chinese with an alien civilization, which I also don't think is realistic. If they had been listening to transmissions from Earth for a very long time, maybe they could decode it and have some form of communication like that. But just based on a single signal, I don't see that happening. But uh, we'll have to see where it goes from here. So uh, until we talk again, I'm Mike Siegel. I write for Ordinary Times. Thank you for watching.